Today we're going to continue our instructional series talking about some different aspects of shooting technique and today we're going to talk about the grip. First things first before I talk about the technique, in my mind the grip serves two purposes. It's to control recoil and it's to support fundamental speed shooting techniques. So support, supporting recoil or, or you know controlling recoil, the objective is to have a tight grip on the gun so that basically when the gun fires, you know it's going to consistently open and close and return back to the same spot that you look every single time. It's not going to like lift off the spot that you shoot and then return to a different place or kind of like bounce back and forth. Uh, if I shoot like a bill drill or a double drill, I should have a concentric group of shots on the target just by staring at the spot I want to go and having the sight consistently land to where I want to. That's what I'm talking about recoil control. It doesn't have to shoot like an open gun. It doesn't have to go perfectly flat. Obviously, the less sight motion we can make happen, the better. But that's going to happen mostly with just support and pressure. In terms of marksmanship, I don't think about what I'm doing with the trigger itself, basically out to 15 yards. My goal is to be able to like keep my firing hand relaxed, rip on the trigger really hard, and have this the rest of my hand stay pretty tender so that the gun will just shoot in a straight line with very little sight motion, almost no matter how hard I pull on the trigger. So with my grip, if I put my finger all the way in the trigger guard like this and pound on the trigger, right, you're going to see the sight shouldn't move very much, right, even if I pull the trigger literally as hard as I can. Right, so that's kind of my goal. It's to make it so that I can just look at a spot, not think about the trigger, and bang on the trigger itself. By keeping my firing hand tender, I can make it so the trigger itself doesn't matter that much. Talking about technique, let's get more specific. In terms of placement, basically, I'm going to put the gun in my hand so that with a neutral wrist angle, it's parallel to the bones of my forearm. It's not kicked to one side or the other. There's no gap under the beaver tail. If I pull this thumb up high, talking about my support hand, I'm going to look at this hump on the side of the gun right here because my gun's kind of flat on the sides. It's a little small for my hands. I'm going to focus on that corner. I'm going to dig the palm of my hand into that corner and wrap around back to front. My objective here is to make it so that this hand is as far back around this side of the gun as possible without disturbing my firing hand. I don't want to have this hand run around the front and then grip on to basically adjust my hand itself. I can't see that very good. I'm going to adjust my hand itself as opposed to basically the actual meat of the gun. So I'm going to try to make this hand come as far back as I can without pushing this hand off. Right. And what you see right here is pretty much how I grip the gun. This is a little bit low for a lot of like compared to what a lot of people do. But again, my rationality here is I want to be able to grip on the gun very consistently. I want to be able to like close but with this placement, I have a perfectly neutral wrist angle with my support hand. If I just bring this hand up, it's going to sit like that anyway. Put the gun in my hand, it's going to sit in the same place. All I have to do is close this hand and it's going to be there. So it supports the consistency angle. I can crush close with this hand as long as I have the, the conditioning to be able to hold this hand tight and, tight and still. It's going to be very comfortable. And to me, the consistency of applying the pressure is what it's all about. What I see many people do essentially is this hand will start maybe something like this. And they see like all this empty space up here. Like they see this whole space and they think, oh, well, I should cover that with palm. So naturally they just put the thumb, their hand right there and this thumb will come like way up high. Some people take this even farther past the logical extreme and you'll see this hand will rotate up like this, right? And kind of torque up on the gun like that. Just trying to make this work, I can feel there's a lot of pressure basically on the side of the gun right here, under the trigger guard right there, but almost nothing around the actual meat of the gun. Um, so I don't really feel that I'm able to apply that much pressure on the gun with this technique. And uh, when I see people trying to employ this in classes a lot, what I usually see is the gun is gonna move around inside this hand this way. And what that tells me is that they're basically having to control the gun with their firing hand because the support hand is just along for the ride. The gun is moving around inside this hand and uh, that's no bueno. The goal is to make it so this hand doesn't have to do anything except pull the trigger. The support hand is gonna stay closed on the gun so that basically the gun's not moving around inside your hands at all. It's not about like trying to get the gun to shoot as flat as possible. Less motion is, of course, better. It's going to be more predictable, but it's mostly about making it so that it's consistent every time. So when you're training and you're just going through your shooting drills, um, it's going to have the same effect no matter what. The effect is you look at a spot, the sight lifts, and it returns back to the same spot as fast as possible. And I don't have to mess around prepping the trigger, being super careful about the trigger direction to make the shot go true, even out to 15 to 20 yards.